See you, girl. I've been a veterinary now for 53 years. I have worked in this area for 43. For me, helping animals is not work. It's, well, call it a calling or whatever. You know, being a veterinarian is a service-related business, I say. You do the best you can and help the animal to make the people happy. And when they are happy, they come back. That's why we're so busy. Try to do the best you can. Watch the deer going across the road. See you. Now, two fawns and a doe. Very pretty. <laughs> I think that's why I love Michigan. Lots of animals. Who's there? Want to come in, Tater? Morning, Autumn. Morning. Okay, Olivia. Okay, just two cats to be spayed. Yeah, I poked mine already. Good. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Dr. Paul. No, get get ammonium chloride in the grain, you know, so that you know you don't get the calcium. Okay, what else we got? I have a Angus cow. She has a bad diarrhea and we can't control it. We've had between four to five over the last several years. Um, even a horse that had no contact had the same symptoms. And normally it's fatal. Don't stand behind her, right? Right. How old? Uh, two. She just calved last November. Not tame. She's an Angus. Yep. How did you get that in here? <laughs> Careful. Carefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she tried to get me yesterday when I stuck my arm in. We've lost four or so over the last few years. Cows? Yes. She will eventually, if she, we don't cure her, she will die. But how do we get some manure out of her? Yeah, without getting trampled. All right. Hang on. No, don't just stick your hand in there, because she'll mm -hmm. break it. Yeah. Oh, come on, will you? OK, lady, turn the other way. Okay, that's your end. If that gets loose, you better hear me squall. <laughs> no, you hear me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's what I want. Good. She'll get back in. Come on. Yeah, that's what I want. Good girl. You ain't a kitten. OK, let me check this, and we'll go from there. Damn. What the heck are they cut tapeworms from? Do you have a lot of swampy areas that they walk in? 
No, because what I saw was tapeworms. And they have, a, have an intermediate host that are the little snails in swamps. This is a weird diarrhea, where she is not digesting it. And I saw tapeworm eggs in there, and that is very uncommon here. There's some low ground, but not technically swamp. So there's no little snails or anything in there? Not no. that you can tell. But... No. I've seen it in the horse where the tapeworm actually chewed through the wall of the intestine, caused peritonitis, and the animal died. OK, we'll fix it up. Go ahead, come along. We'll fix you up. OK. How many cattle you got? About a dozen. Do you have a chute? Yes. This is the drug that you need. This is the wormer for the tapeworms. 40 cc in the mouth. OK. This goes underneath the skin. Two or three shots. Two or three, OK. She's going to hate you for it. OK. Take care of her and don't get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of surprised. I'm kind of relieved. The fun part is going to be the medication. Orally in the mouth and shots in the neck for two or three days. <laughs> Wing it. <laughs> and then hang on. There are hires in my dog hat. We have a litter of six Rottweiler puppies. They're getting their six weeks vaccinations and deworms today. I got the fattest one. You got the fattest? You want yours to go first? Yeah. Yeah? This is Apollo. Apollo. We're just kind of doing a physical exam on Apollo, checking out his teeth, looking at his ears. Want to feel his belly. Maybe see if he's got a couple, uh, couple boy parts down here. Excuse me, he says. <laughs> when puppies come in for their very first vaccines, it's a good opportunity to be able to kind of do an overall health check and make sure that everything is going well with them. They're just so relaxed. Good job. All right, Apollo's all done. You're a good helper. She can come work for us anytime. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this melting? Their daddy does that. All right, um, 6.4 pounds. I love them because they're cute and special. A puddle. <laughs> they all look like puddles. I'm going to listen to her heart and her lungs. I want to listen to it. You want to listen to? Here you go. Put those in your ears. You put that right there. I can hear it. Good. <laughs> I mean, she's alive. <laughs> you had two doctors today. I know. <laughs> you know, when I was a little girl, Dr. Pohl was my veterinarian, and I used to do exactly what you're doing right now. I'm going to look in the ears, make sure there's no bugs in there. Nope. No mushrooms growing out, right? Yeah. No. All right, that's good. <laughs> she loves animals. Um, she's into horses. She does 4-H. That's good. Checking the ears. Sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> it is a girl. OK, good. You can do it right here so you can watch this time. So I just poke in, and it goes right in. Did I check? I don't think you can try this one. I'm sorry. Puppies are doing really good. Yes, they are. When I was a little girl, I was really intrigued in what the veterinarians were doing with my animals. I got just as involved as what she is, so it's really great to see this energy in her. Enjoy him. Nice puppy. I was so happy with how Dr. Olivia let her interact with her. It was awesome. It was awesome. It absolutely made my daughter Cadence's day. Yes. <laughs> Bingo. I should be able to clean that up and get it sutured across so it will heal. Arthritis kind of flares up with the barometric pressure changes. Those might be days when he needs more pain meds. Color is not bad. Let's see if we can take a temperature on her. Yeah. 
put your room on for now. All right, and let me go grab one of the dogs. Okay. Daisy is a seven, almost eight-year-old Walker plot hunting dog, but um, she does not hunt. <laughs> she is afraid of hunting. She's a good girl, though. My son opened the door, and her and our Great Dane took off. When I got home, she was on the porch, and when I walked up onto the porch, I seen her laying there, and she didn't come and um, excited like she normally would. And then I seen the blood trail on our porch where she was laying. Oh my gosh, no. Who ran over him? I'm not sure. I think she got caught in a trap, actually. In the what? Trap. Trap. Oh. I know, like, over here where her paw is, that's completely ripped open. When did this happen? Sometime today. Not broke. No, it's not. I don't think it's broke. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just let go. I'm going to give him an anesthetic. Okay. Because I have to sew it up anyhow. It's okay. What happened? She got hurt. Yeah, the doctor pulls going to suture it up, give her stitches. We usually go through another clinic, but they would not take her due to the severity of her foot. So we called Dr. Pohl to help her out. She means a lot to us. Hi, kids. OK, hang on to his head. You're OK, you're OK. All ready. Let him go to sleep. OK. And then we'll take him in the surgery, and we'll clean it up, antibiotics, sewed up, and pick him up tomorrow. It's a pretty sharp cut. I mean, I know. it goes all the way around. Holy cow. She has so many cuts on that paw. It takes a lot of sutures to heal this up, and I hope that everything will heal up good. Did you tell you in school that you cannot suture your pads? No. Well, that's what I was taught in school. You cannot suit your pants. So I proved them wrong. We've had her her whole life. Me and Zach um, got her as a puppy. Um, Zach watched her be born. So she's very sentimental, because it was our first dog we got together. I'm getting there. We're very relieved that is not broken. Um, relieved that she's going to have her back leg. She's going to be limping with the front paw for a while. That took a lot of sutures. There was a lot of loose skin laying around. I know that she has lost some sensation, but I think that she'll be walking pretty good later on. Let's get our boots on, huh? Good. Let's go feed the horsies, huh? You think the horsies are awake, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Look, there's Raz. He's peeking at us, huh? Yeah. Say good morning, Raz. Good morning. My husband and I have two kiddos. Raz drank all of his water this morning. Soon after we started the process of adopting our daughter, our son was born. And uh, now that they're getting older, they love to help me in the barn and be a part of daily life and daily chores. I think we got some horse poop we got to clean up today, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. You want to get your shovel? OK. Where's your wheelbarrow at? We got to get the wheelbarrow. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You going in there with that one? Yeah. All right. You got it. They were just cleaned brand new last night, so they're not very dirty. And uh, Sarah doesn't quite know the difference between completely dirty and clean yet. But the fact that she shows the initiative to do it herself. That works for me. 
Good job. Thank you. All right, did we get all the poop? Yeah. I don't see any poop. Do you see any poop? No. No? All right, what do you think? Should we fill up their water buckets? Yeah. Is that one done? Uh-uh, done. Okay, so I can take it away? Yeah. Oh, not yet. Yeah. <laughs> Is it full? No. Okay. Yeah. Not yet? Yeah. Is it full now? No. Yeah. Okay. Is it full now? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's full now, huh? Yeah. Better put it in the other one. Yeah. Whose truck is that? Papa. It's Papa. Yeah. Yeah. There's Papa. Hey. Chopped liver now. What are you doing? Huh? How you doing, Dad? Good. What do you think? Head back in the house so I can grab my tea, and then I gotta go to work. Okay. Love you. Yeah. Be good for Papa. Love you, Dad. Have a good day. Thanks for watching the kiddos. No problem. Yeah. Love you guys. Bye. See ya. My father babysits my kids for me. They like to call him Papa. He retired a little early so that he could watch my kiddos, and that makes my life possible. Um, he started doing that when I was still in vet school. I was really grateful that he was willing to do that and help me with them. Oh, no. All I got was a back of a hand We got a time. front leg or a back leg. What's going on here? This right one there. up here? Sounds even better there. I'm really enjoying the time that I've spent here so far. There is a large variety of different things that we see on a daily basis. Hey, what's that? Sometimes we have to drop everything and run off to an emergency farm call, which really, you know, gets the adrenaline pumping, and I love it. How many calvings have you done? Two. Oh, let's do it. Many farmers, they pull the calf themselves. So if they can't, then it's our turn. OK, let's go. Oh, I tried for, an, it felt like an hour, but it was only 10 minutes, probably. I was determined I was going to get that by myself and not have to call them. Is she due? Hand me the water. She's about three weeks early. Huh. She is not ready yet. I had that, I know. She's early. Yeah, I know she's early. She's not dilated. In the process of calving, the uterus contracts and the calf then actually straightens out its legs and lays the head on top. That's the normal position. Man, that is tight. Why is the uterus so tight? And this is all manure in there, so. So the calf has been dead, I right? I think so. You're pushing her back in to pull that leg up, right? Yeah. If they thought to have a calf and they can't get it out, they die. Jesus. Because the calf did not straighten out its legs by itself, we have to pull the legs forward. Because I can get a hold of the hoof, but I cannot pull it up at all. Jesus. Let me try. Come here. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Pull. Test, see what I mean? The mama cow is really pushing against us, so we can't get the calf's leg up as easily as what we would like to. Come on, mama cow. Got it. Look at this. There it is. I got it. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you seen it? Two arms there. That was that was amazing, really. I don't pull my hand anymore. If it is uh, that big, then the calf puller is the best tool you can have. 
Okay, she'll fall. It's a pretty good sized cab, Marty. That is. That's a big calf. That's, That's a, a big, big calf. calf. I'm glad to get the calf out because now you can save the cow. So next year she can have another calf and everything can be normal. It was a good outcome. The best of the bad situation, I guess you want to put it that way. I'm learning a lot from Dr. Pohl. Uh, I have been since I got here and I think I always will be. You got to do all the fun stuff. I didn't even get dirty. What did we change my clothes for? <laughs> Marty, we'll see ya. Thank you. Good to meet you, Marty. Come on, girl. Up on your feet. We're always happy when, when Dr. Bull comes. He always gets the job done. Can't have seen 707 mobile three to base. Would one of you call Deb and let her know I'm on my way? I grew up in a rural area. I live in a rural area now. You would not find me in Michigan and city. It's not gonna happen. I think I wanted to become a vet because I grew up as a dairy farm daughter and I like the cows. I wanted to take care of them. So I like to dance. I've taken dance classes since I was in kindergarten. I belong to a choir group. It's a barbershop style chorus, so that means everything's done a cappella. I like to be part of the group. I just find it fun. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Deb. How are you? We've got llamas, and their teeth need to be Ground down. Snap! No, no, no. Come here. Get in the barn. So the llama's defense mechanisms are either A, run away. Hurry up, guys. Or B, they spit out at things. I know what you're going to do. It's not necessarily spit. It's actually room and content, so you get hay and grass and whatever else they've eaten. It's just gross. Stop. She can be a little witch. Stop. Don't you even think about it. Quit your dancing. OK. You want to do this? Stop, stop, stop. It's a hazard of the job, and you just deal with it. You have got to behave. I know this is terrible, but your teeth have got to be done. And sometimes in the roof of their mouth, they will get these small, sharp teeth right there, sharp. I know. She's not happy with what we're doing. It's all right. It's all right. It's not that bad. So we're floating the llama's teeth to make them smoother so they're not sharp and they're not cutting the llama on the inside of the mouth. The same thing as if you've bitten the inside of your cheek, then every time you try to chew something, you bite yourself again. It's the same problem as the llama's having right now. The teeth are sharp enough that as they chew, it's just painful, so they don't want to eat. They don't eat enough, and they can lose weight. There we go. You can hear it. <laughs> OK, we're done. Right. Come on. Excuse me. Ugh. <sighs> OK, buddy. Let's see what you do. Now, her canines, she doesn't have any lower ones. Her upper ones are very small. We'll dull them a little bit for her. Yes, I know. Yeah, bite right on. Good job. I know, your legs are dentist, right? All right. Good, good. There we go. Ah, you got it. OK, good. That's it for you. Good. OK, hey, we're, done. we're done. If we didn't have to deal with your teeth, I'd probably have 50 of you. Wow. That'd be a lot. Come on. All right, they've done well, I think. We've got them flattened off. Thank you for coming out. You're welcome. Have a I good day. I appreciate it. The only thing about camel is teeth. Level three to base, done at Llamas. What's new? Nothing new. <laughs> Easy 
girl. Easy. Hold me. Step. Good girl. This is Fooler, and she's my daughter's barrel horse. Um, yesterday morning, we were going out to the pasture because they are stalled every night. And her and her stall buddy decided they wanted to run to the pasture. Well, the gate was closed, and she ran through the metal gate. She loves to run. Loves to run. I want to be first, and I want all the hay to myself. My daughter and I are worried that maybe her sinus cavity is damaged, and with her being a barrel horse, um, we don't want her to be, get bloody noses when she runs. Which one? Oh, this is Comfort Company? Yeah. Oh, yeah, good. She won't go in a trailer by herself. Oh, of course. So we had to bring a buddy. Actually, the swelling has went down since last I night. I know. We'll wash it up. You're going to have to sedate her, because she's a rarer. And she comes at you with her front feet, don't you, baby girl? Easy girl. Oh, easy. Good job, baby. Thank you. Good job. OK, start scrubbing the bejeepers out of it. And I'll get suit your material. You got it pretty deep in there, Chica. How far in did you go? We don't know. That's why we're here. Pretty ways in. We're worried about the sinus cavity because she is a runner. When they are, you know, exercising or running a lot, they, they breathe, they have to bring in a lot of air, they have a lot of body that they have to oxygenate. Um, so they're bringing in all of the air through their nostrils. So if this laceration were to penetrate into Fuller's nasal airway, it would definitely impact her ability to race for the rest of the season. You're probing it pretty deep, no, so. No, and with her breathing, if she had a connection with the sinuses, stuff would be blowing out at yes. me. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. Just deep. It got big, big needle, deep, deep sutures. The wound is pretty deep, but it's just a skin laceration. Just like that. So we should be able to just close with some sutures. Tighter. It'll, tighter. It'll tighter. Pull tight, won't it? Am I going to have to remove these sutures? Do you mind? No, I don't oh, mind. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I have a vet tech that lives with me, so. It's been an eventful week at our house. We had a dog fight. We had a horse get injured. We're doing good. Fooler, huh? Yep, she was born on April Fool's Day. Aw. Deep. I'm, Very deep. I'm going deep. That's why I needed to get a second bite. Main thing is just tight enough, skin to skin, edge to edge, and they'll heal up real good. Man, these are good. I think we're done. Good. OK, cold water. That'll take the swelling out. I could give it a tetanus shot. Most likely, you know, not much of a scar. Who cares? She's not looking in the mirror. Good to meet you. Nice meeting you, Dr. Olivia. I am very relieved. I'm glad it wasn't as bad as what we anticipated. I thought we were in for surgery and x-rays and the whole nine yards. Yeah, I think it was a good, successful day. Let's go this way. Let's go this way, Stevie. No, 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 no. Wait, wait for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, hello. Come on. Let's go, Stevie. Stevie, Stevie, slow down. I won't tell you we're going to Dr. Poles next time, OK? <laughs> oh, he's been vomiting bad. I mean, it just was coming out all over the place. My kitchen floor was just flooded, usually in pretty good health. Hello. Hi. Hey, bud. You're OK. You're OK. I know. Sometimes when dogs are really anxious, they express it by excessive panting. They can be uh, just pretty stressed by being in a new environment and uncomfortable. Uh, no, you're all, uh, you're all right. That's just how they show us that they're not feeling good. And he went potty in the bedroom, and that's not Stevie. And he started vomiting. I mean, it was all over my kitchen floor. Did he eat anything outside that you saw? No. Or? Okay. No. So I'd want to take um, 
an x-ray of his abdomen and make sure that there's nothing abnormal going on in his yeah. stomach or his intestines. And then um, check some blood work also, make sure he doesn't have an infection or something yeah. like that going on. Come on, bud. I need some help um, drawing blood. Hey. Nothing has happened. Put some alcohol on you. Stevie is a joy. He's just lovable. He's a big, lovable dog. Baby. Give that to you to start. Okay. Every dog reacts a little bit differently. Chill, bud. Some dogs, you can be doing things that seem kind of painful, and they have no reaction at all. Would you like to help me with x-rays? Stevie, I think he's just a little bit more on the dramatic end of the spectrum. Chill, bud. All right. I didn't really see anything on the x-ray, like as far as something blocked up. He's got a lot of gas in his stomach because he's panting like crazy right now. But I have the blood work running. It's just going to take a couple more minutes. But so far, I haven't found anything to be too concerned about. Oh, all right, man. Thank you. I knew he wasn't going to like the x-ray, and she got him through it. So she can handle Stevie. She can handle anything. <laughs> Dang it. I a few things slightly elevated. Here we go. All right. So one of his liver values is a little bit high, but sometimes it can increase when they just aren't feeling well. And then his white blood cell count is a little bit high, which can sometimes mean they're fighting an infection. So I'm going to put him on some antibiotics also. But right now, since he's sick, we'll start with some nausea medication, the antibiotics. It does sting just a little bit. OK. No, no, you're all right. I think with the medications that we started, CV okay. should recover just fine. Just a minute. I'm sorry. Sorry. I know. I'm sorry, bud. OK, you're all right. But when he's feeling better, it'd be nice to kind of check back in, look at that blood work again. Make sure that his liver looks good. Walk nice. Walk nice. It's a good boy. Uh uh, Stevie, don't do this to me. I'm gonna go flying down that walk, and I know it. Now you wait. Summer is my time of year. Feeling the sun, listening to the water, looking at wildlife. I just love the long days and spending as much time as I can outside. What I love about being a vet is seeing new problems every day and figuring out new ways to solve them, working with people to get their animals and their pets feeling better. But. It can be exhausting, that amount of mental gymnastics I have to do in the clinic on a day-to-day -day basis. So paddleboarding is just a nice way to enjoy the water at a nice slow pace. And just kind of how I recharge and get my energy back after a long day. Morning. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing better than you. Yeah, probably. Hi, sweetie. When was the last one born? Eleven o'clock. Last night. Last night. If she's had two already, then I don't see any reason why she shouldn't have the rest. So we'll see if there's anybody there or not. Yeah, there's, there's one there. Really? 
Yeah. And she's been she's been trying all along. Weird. I don't know what to deal with. Okay, no. Okay. What I'd like to do is to go downstairs, have a picture taken, an X-ray, see how many there are. Go for it. And I'm going to give her a shot of oxytocin now. Oxytocin is a natural occurring hormone that contracts the uterus. And a little bit extra makes the puppies come out a lot faster. OK, and where's the other one? The other one is actually my neighbor's dog. Better go. OK, this, this first one had two puppies. Last one at 11 o'clock last night has the head right in the, inside the pelvis. We're taking her downstairs. Yeah, we're taking her downstairs and... Uh... We got a second one. So this one had three, She's got four. Three. She's still very fat. She's still very Just lift big. her up. Good. Now it's a small pop star, too. I figured it was the size she is. Yeah. OK, but they've had some. So first of all, I'm going to give them oxytocin, and we'll see if she starts back in labor. Do you want an X-ray of the corgi also? There's more in there, too. And that one has a big pelvis. She got oxytocin, too. Its head is uh, bent down. It needs it, like, mm. lifted. Mm. Should I see if I can? Yeah. Go for it. Let's go back in surgery. Let me put a glove on. Excuse me. OK, that pop that I felt has the head turned down. So Dr. Lisa has a lot smaller fingers than I do. She's trying to straighten out the head. Hopefully, they'll come by themselves then. So I'm going to try and just kind of push it in and lift its head up. It's, I can get my finger around its jaw. I'm just. OK, carefully. Anything else from her? Not really. I did see her breathing pick up a little bit just a minute ago. Okay. I know, Mama. Nothing yet with that one. Do you okay. Want yet? Yes. All right, Mommy. I know. I know. You got her? Oh, Mom. One stuck. One stuck and one in. I don't think we're going to get it. No. This one's got two left in her, Doc. And one of them, the head is down, not coming into the pelvis. Same thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this one feels like it's oh, in the same position as the other one. It looks like it. How many puppies do we have left? Two in this one, three in that one. <sighs> OK, that's it. <sighs> C-section. Good. Scrubber, quick. I think we should just do a C-section for her, too. OK, give her the shot and one table and the other. Definitely does not happen every day that we have two patients with puppies stuck in the same position, both requiring some emergency surgery. Always room for a first. How's your puppy doing, Hillary? They're gasping. So we just got out of surgery. Dr. Pole and I ended up doing C-sections on both of the patients with stuck puppies today. Oh. The poodle thankfully had a couple live pups still. Unfortunately, the corgi's pups were all deceased. It looks like they'd been dead for a little while and to the point where her uterus was starting to rupture open. So I think if we hadn't done surgery on her, maybe within even a couple hours, her uterus would have ruptured open and she could have certainly died. Oh, Mama, leave her with you. Hi, Mom. Both of the moms came through surgery OK. They're still waking up. We've given them some warming discs to raise up their temperature and some fluids. Given the situation, uh, everything has turned out pretty well so far. All right, she's starting to sit up now. So we can probably take them out. They both have sutures on their incisions. They need to stay in for a minimum of two weeks. 
thank goodness we had enough people there and two veterinarians. So yes, the females were good, so we can take care of the puppies and everything was fine. Alrighty, there we go. Drive carefully. Daisy got caught in a snare or a live trap. And when I got home one Wednesday evening, um, I seen that her foot was completely torn open. She had the cone of shame on her for about a month and a half. It's healing, but it's still not all the way there. Dr. Pohl said it's gonna take a long time. <coughs> Daisy is back to herself loves to get into trouble. Daisy. She loves to chase rats and mice in our barn, and she is still trying to run the roads. <laughs> it's like nothing's ever happened to her. She's just a great dog. Come on, guys. Ready to eat? I'm coming. When we came here, my sister and I, we imported horses from the Netherlands. The Frisian horse is a very old breed. They say that the knights in shining armor in the Middle Ages were riding Frisian horses. Hello. They are fancy, high-stepping horses. They are fast, and you can work with them, you can ride them, you can do anything with them. Hi, buddy. Little girl, over here. Come on, get in there. Yeah, that's enough for you. Hi, sweetie. I love these horses. Good girl. You come out of the clinic after a busy day, you take care of these animals, pat them a little bit, you run the fingers through you know, their hair, their mane, grab a hold of the tail, you talk to them. Man, you get big, girl. It relaxes you, and that takes care of all the stress of the day. Hey, bird! Come on, bird. Bird has to hurry up and eat. Because if she doesn't hurry up and eat, the horse eats it. <laughs> See you, ladies. <laughs> 